regular guys podcast is back once again ladies and gentlemen you know who i am maddie we got sean our guys jake is back with us again jake we miss you my guy you good man tell people what's good what's up guys glad to be back um i'm just ready to talk some football especially on my new york teams giants jets just pulled the jets especially pulled off People call it an upset. I call it expectations at this point. But we'll get into that a little bit more. We should talk Yankees, yes. too. But, oh, never mind. All right. All right. Listen, Sean, it's been a while. Yes, need, we will. All right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, but we miss you, buddy. Uh, bye, everywhere. Those who are listening, Jake has not been here for a while. You are in for... Some very spicy talk as usual. We wouldn't expect anything less from my guy. Um, but hey, to start our show off, guys, you know where I've been standing now, Mr. Spence. For those who know, I've been hashtag fire Frank Reich for almost two seasons. And thank goodness they finally fired Frank Reich. I was so happy, literally so happy. What I've been wanting to, to happen for the longest has finally come. And man, it feels good to be honest with you. Uh, my, my first initial thoughts are, it was literally, Frank literally helped fire himself. What do I mean by this? Bench Matt Ryan, two weeks ago. Fired offense coordinator a week ago took over as offensive coordinator in the duties and you only put up three points in your first game three points minus two you yards in the first quarter you literally said hey or say yeah just you don't gotta do it i'm gonna do it myself i'm just gonna gradually do it and you'll just have no choice and that's literally what happened and i'm i'm so happy and We'll see what happens with the season. I still want us to to lose. I want Sam to stay the starter because it's a simple fact. I want a low draft pick. We need to stop with this revolving door of quarterbacks. It's been six for the last six years. Uh, I mean, I know some Colts fans want to blame luck. I mean, retirement happens. At some point, even if he stayed, it was going to happen. He was going to retire. But at some point, it has to end. Um, I will say... Jeff Saturday as an interim head coach is a bit of a head scratcher because it was so far <laughs> left field that I didn't see it coming. I'm like, you have Gus Bradley, who has coaching experience, maybe Boba Ventron, who's our special teams coordinator, who's kind of a young, flashy name. You want to see what he's got. But to go, I mean, Jeff Saturday, I was just watching this guy on ESPN, bro. Really? Yeah. Like, my guy's a high school coach. But hey, man, we'll see. Uh, just real quick before I let you guys, you know, kind of chime in. <clears throat> Obviously, if I'm Ursa, let the whole thing plan out. Uh, Chris Ballard, I know you're listening to this. I'm about to start hashtag fire Chris Ballard next. I'm going to give you to the end of the season, though. But just know you're you're there, man. Just we'll see what happens. Uh, if, if I'm Ursa, though, what I would do, honestly, who I want to see next coach, I, honestly, I feel like you do have to call Sean Payton. I just feel like you have to make the call just to see. I don't think he will, and I'm pretty sure he's still somewhat under contract with the Saints. So if you got to trade for him and all this stuff, I don't want any part of it because we need draft picks. There is a – I wouldn't call him a sleeping giant. There's an underrated offense coordinator that we don't really hear about, we don't talk about enough. Uh, offensive, the offense coordinator for the um, Eagles. At first, I thought Nick Sirianni was calling the plays because he was the OC for the Colts. I thought he was doing the same. It has been Shane Steichen. Hopefully I'm saying this right. And offense this year has looked really good. He's gotten really good production out of Jalen Hurts. The running game last year was tops in the league. So if you're going to draft a young quarterback, you want to pair him with the offensive-minded coach, let's see what happens. Um, I wanted to say before the season started, uh, Brian, Byron left, which I don't know about Byron right now. Man. It's just – but, yeah, I don't know. Sean, what are your thoughts so far on uh, 
Mr. Reich, hashtag Frank Reich being fireman. It should have been done probably the first two or three weeks of the season. But I think Jim Irsay um, is a little senile. I think he needs to sell the team. He is – you go and get – and I love Jeff Saturday. He's hilarious. He's a high school coach. He doesn't have coaching experience. And you go get Jeff Saturday, I get it. You have a horrible offensive lineman. You want to get an offensive line guy out there to help out. But what is he – I don't understand what he's doing at all. I mean, this is – this was such a head scratcher. You know, Agreed. if Jeff Saturday doesn't work out, who, who are you guys going to hire next? Uh, Pat McAfee, you know, like that yeah. is insane to just go and get a guy that's coaching high school. What did he go to? Did Ursay go to a high school game? It's like, hey, I really like how their office is looking good on high school. You know, it's a really strange. I've heard. They should have. Yeah, I've I heard mean, like the different rumors. The go ahead. Yeah, no, just I've heard. So the rumor that's circling around is that when Jeff retired, uh, Irsay offered him um, not a head coaching job, but a front office job. And he yeah. turned it down to because he wanted, you know, live his life, blah, 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 which I get. So basically what they're saying, this is by hiring Jeff is he's an outsider is to just come in, get to know the team, see the weakness and the strengths. He won't become the coach. He won't become the GM, but he would take over some sort of job role in the front office and someone who I guess Irsay would trust. It's sketchy. It really is sketchy. I'm with you. I feel like Irsay should either step down or sell. The guy's like 99% of the time is is drunk anyway, so it's like... (laughs) Yeah, I I mean... I, I'd rather have seen Pat McAfee as a coach just because at least we can laugh. You know, I mean, we got Reggie just, Wayne as, as receiver coach. If you wanted a player, just give it to him. You know, go get um, Edward James or something back, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was, it was time. I mean, th- this past week, the first quarter, they had minus two yards in the whole first quarter. Was, he should have – I mean, Ursay should have went down on the field and fired him right there, you know. Um, but, yeah, th- there's not much else to say. He needed to be fired a few weeks ago. It, it, it stinks because it was such a promising year for you guys. I, I think we were all really high on you guys. I, you know, I, I That's definitely what burns the I most. Had when eleven or twelve, but it's looking Man. like it's looking like a two, three, four year rebuild. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, they got a decent defense, but they they ran uh, your boy. He's hurt all year now. I mean, they ran him to death last year, um, Jonathan Taylor, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, know. just real quick uh, before I let Jake and, chime and, in. And, um, and, yeah, and I just wanted to say, you guys have one of the worst offensive lines in football, but the bad thing about that, that's not even the worst thing. They're the highest paid offensive line as well. So That's the worrisome part. Like, but that's where I say I don't think it's a rebuild. The defense is, is really good, and it's frustrating because week in and week out, they play great just for the offense to be bad, to be yeah. trash. Oh, you are – I'm not saying you're a quarterback and an offensive line away from any Super Bowl, but I'd rather watch a rookie make mistakes and grow. Uh, finally get a left tackle. It's literally just a left tackle and, like, a guard, and it'll be better than what it is now. I, and just see what happens. I mean, I'm not – again, I'm not saying we make playoffs next year with a rookie, but it would still give me a lot of hope just watching that over – Sam yeah. Ellinger and Matt Ryan and yeah. Nick Foles. Uh, but Jake, what do you got think? Can I, can I oh, ask a question? Because I, I wanted your opinion on it. Sorry, Jake, I don't mean to. But I wanted – I was listening to some sports radio today, and they were just saying how bad of a situation um, salary-wise the Colts are. And, and it, it's not looking like a promising place for any high-profile coaches to go there just because salary alone – it's not looking good. And now I didn't get into the details on their, their salary, but um, from what I was hearing, um, I think it was Adam Schefter, if I'm not mistaken, was talking about the salary and stuff. Is, are they like real tight with the salary as well, overpaying? I mean, they do have the highest paid offensive line, but that's what I was. That's I think what I offensive a- line wise, everybody that they've paid, um, it's not like they're attached to these contracts. 
So okay. if let's focus on offensive line, just the two spots, center, Ryan Kelly, Braden Smith, who got paid, you could easily move those guys and then the contract comes off. Okay. And it I, clears yeah, up. I, it's not like, gotcha. oh, we trade them, but we still going to be playing Braden Smith for next 10 years, you know, type ordeal. Now, a guy like DeForest Buckner, yeah, that's different. Um, but, yeah, but I don't like, see why you would want to yeah. trade him. He's been he's a beast. You know, a beast yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Gotcha. Jake, okay. quick thoughts. I just wanted to hear that. Oh, so I told I told Matt earlier, I texted him, I wouldn't be shocked if this move is to have Jeff Saturday be GM because he sees everything that's going on. He looks at the team. He sees the strengths and weaknesses. And it's better to have a guy that's already been with the team and to bring in a fresh face that really hasn't messed with anybody or doesn't really know the team itself and know exactly what needs to be fixed and what needs to be changed. Because the Colts aren't a rebuilding team, to be honest. It's a few fixes here and there, but not Band-Aid fixes. We need rookies. We need young guys in those positions. It's not, let me go ahead and grab a veteran. Let me go ahead and grab somebody that maybe has two or three years left. You need to get solid young pieces there to build around it. So I think that's what the Jeff Saturday move could be. Possible GM. Because you can come in without any GM experience and do a good job. Look at Joe Douglas wasn't a real full-time GM at all the, his other places with the Jet before with the Jets, and look what he's done in New York. Um, Lynch in San Francisco, he was never anything crazy before, and look what he's built in San Fran. So it can happen. It's easier to come with no experience as a GM to then start and build something fresh. So I'm thinking it could be something like that. Gotcha. If that's the case, hashtag fire Chris Ballard. You hear, heard it here first, but Jake. Man, what's the little kid's name that had the interview with Sauce? My guy's out there eating ice cream again. Why? Because the Jets won again. The Jets there, I don't have like won again. <laughs> Josh Allen. I would knock geez. that kid's ice cream right out of his right right out of his hands, dude. Little punk. Josh <laughs> Allen got lost in the sauce. Mm. Jay, too much for him. Too much. Now, for him. Jake, Jake, to the outsiders who are not fans. I'm not going to say I saw this. I did see Jets being competitive and, and winning some good games. But I will say they are exceeding my expectations. I can definitely sit here and say I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. But, Jay, mm -hmm. you said, and you are out here having arguments with people on Reels from oh, our yeah. Instagram page. Yes. That at what point do we stop real or stop saying that it's an upset and this just is what we do? I'm going to need all the, I'm not even going to say ignorant, I'm going to say ignorant football fans to stop looking at the logo and remembering the Jets' history. This is a defense. I'm not talking about a team in general. This is a defense that can play and mess with almost any offense in the NFL. That's not, it's not something that's me crossing the line, going overboard. This defense can play with any offense. Look what they did to Buffalo. There was no injuries. They weren't, yeah, they weren't beat up. If anything, they added offensive help. They got Naeem Hines. Yes, he's not a top anything back, but they added weapons to that. And look what happened. Stephon Diggs had three targets, zero receptions, and zero yards in the second half. Where was he after that big play in the first quarter? He was lost. In sauce. Lost in the sauce, baby. Granted, it's not just Gardner. DJ Reed's a huge part on that other side of sauce, of sauce Gardner. Then you have Jordan Whitehead. He won a Super Bowl in Tampa. He knows what he's doing in the backfield. You got LaMarcus Joyner. He's a solid veteran. You got those two guys back there in this playing safety. They're commanding the backfield. Then you have CJ Mosley, who was a great with Baltimore. He had a bad couple of years because of injury. He's healthy now. He had a great year last year. He's bought in. And then you got Solomon Thomas, who was there with the 49ers, with Robert Sala. So he's got a few people there that is helping him build that up, build that defense. I'm telling you, man, this defense is solid. Now on the offense, I, I really, I'm probably going to regret saying this. You guys might clip it. I think after okay. this year, the Jets might have to look at a different quarterback. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Um, we're all in Zach agreement. Wilson, I think, yeah, we're yeah. all in agreement with that take. Zach Wilson has all the potential, but he's reminding me of, um, oh my God, the quarterback that used to play for Denver. Forgot his name. He had a great uh, arm, but he just sucked everywhere. Who, Jay Cutler? Yeah. Oh. Man, I like Jay. Jay or now. you're talking about recent? No, I'm talking about Cutler. Cutler has some like good Cutler, seasons, though. but he never had anything great. He, his thing was, man, he has the arm. He can go crazy. But nothing's happening. And on Sunday, he got hurt again. Zach Wilson got hurt again. And within two seasons, he's been hurt twice and really bad injuries. And then again, he got hurt just a little bit. This Jets team is way ahead. They're way past waiting for Zach Wilson. So either he needs to figure it out or they need to go ahead, draft another guy, someone that maybe is ready, or leave Zach there and just go ahead and get yourself a veteran quarterback that could still play. We'll get Geno That's Smith. what I think. <laughs> I bring mean, Geno back. <laughs> hey, bring, bring Geno back. I'm all for it. Yeah. Bring Geno back. Bring Geno back. Yeah, no, I agree there with that take. I feel like if if Zach's not the guy, I don't know if draft would be the the best bet because of the simple fact the defense is that good. Like you said, yeah. it is really good. Uh, DJ yeah. Reed and and Sauce are a great one two combo at corner, yeah. and, and I, it's only going to get better. Yeah, and they're young. It's only going to get better because that's you know Salah's mo. Um, I feel like Jets might be one of those where it's a trade away from quarterback type. If you have the assets to do so, I don't know who would be out there, but obviously you're not going to, I'm not saying like, Oh yeah, go get Jimmy G. No, I feel like a legit game changer type yeah. quarterback trade move, but. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I see it. Um, I really love the move that they did at the deadline to get James Robinson. Um, he's a, he's a one, he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So it was great to continue to just have another body in there that can that can get you the yards because Dane Robinson's not washed. He's not a bad running back. No. He's not what more. the Jags wanted, yeah, but he know. fits more of the Jets run style. Get the yeah, yards, thought, yeah. push the pile. I, I love that. I love that trade. And they what? They traded a six round pick? I'll take yeah. that. Yeah, they uh so, I like the uh I thought when but but when they lost uh Brees Hall. And your right tackle Tucker, I was like, man, they're oh, gonna be in man. a little bit of trouble because yeah. Tucker's amazing. And, and Hall was having to, I mean, he probably gonna be the rookie of the year, honestly. I mean, that guy was a beast. Um, but they 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 ran the ball in the fourth quarter against the Bills, averaged 10 yards of carry in the fourth quarter. But like yep. you said, it's gonna come down to the Jets defense, not only playing against whatever offense weekly, they gotta play against their own quarterback as well. Because yep. last week against the Patriots, oh you know, Wilson, beat, you know, he beat, he beat, he beat you guys. The Patriots didn't beat you guys. He beat you guys. So, yeah. That's a, we win, lost that's the a game. win. The Patriots that didn't win. Should, yeah. That's yeah. a win that should be on your guys' record. And that's what's going to be the frustrating thing is this defense is going to have to play amazing every week. Yeah. And Wilson's, uh, he can't turn the ball over, you know? So, I mean, that's a, that's going to be the, the biggest thing this year, but everything else, like you guys both said, I mean, you can't take nothing away from these guys. I love how they were getting pressure on, on Allen without having to blitz. I yeah. Mean, that, they're that, just rushing you, four if, guys. If you, get, if you can rush four and get pressure on any quarterback, golden. Patrick Mahomes, you Allen, golden. you're set, you're set. You're not, and that's what they were doing. I mean, you got to be impressed with the jets, but like I said, I mean, that Zach Wilson, he's got, and go, I'll say man. this. I'm, I don't know what Joe Shane, what his plan is for the Giants. Daniel Jones isn't signed anywhere after this year. Oh, no. I'm, not, I'm not saying. Him being in gang green next year. Him being uh, a I Jet. Hope, I mean, I hope they switch teams. Wilson. <laughs> I'd love I mean, it I'll, would be, I'll take Daniel Jones. I would it. die. You would, you, you if, would still be a quarterback flipped, away. <laughs> if they flipped it. And it was like a instant yeah. just game changer for both. I don't know. I feel no, like he'd be better he'd be better suit for for the Giants system and Jones would better suit. You can't I mean, because let's be real. I mean, I feel like Salah is bringing is building the New York Niners. Oh, a hundred percent. Like this is literally like what it is. Like 
it's the New York Niners, you know, in the AFC. And I just feel like the offense is kind of going to look like the Niners did where it's we want to run the ball, run the ball. Yeah, we want to pass. We're going to need to really be flashy. So, I mean, we'll see. And I think that's uh, why they're being really stingy with Elijah Moore. Because I yeah. feel like he thinks Elijah Moore could be his version of Debo. Short, quick, throw him in the slot, try to get some plays around there for him. That's what I feel like he can do. And then you have your um, – the other one, Garrett Wilson, could be like your A.U.K., the guy they could put on the outside and go ahead and get some – you know, get the contested passes. I know A.U.K. is a little shorter, but he has that same play style as a wide receiver. And then I'm going to say one last thing about the New York teams and the Giants. Daniel Jones has five game-winning drives this this year. He's not a game manager. People were saying he's a game manager. A lot of those, the, these last couple of wins have been because of game, Daniel Jones. game manager. I'm still saying it. Uh, you can't. I'll give you the first, the first probably three wins. A hundred percent. He just had. Just don't make a mistake. But the last couple have been because of him, not in spite of him. So that's something because the, there was a couple of games here that Barkley's been. Eh, he's been okay. So, so. It's hard for him to run that much. But Daniel Jones said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And he's looking nice. I'm not saying he's going to be – he's going to get a max deal. He's going to be a top eight quarterback. You think they're going to resign him? I think they should resign him. I'd probably do a three- or four-year deal at about, like, 15, 15, 16 so. a year. I, yeah, I would I take you that. For that price. And, if you get him for that price, yeah. And you can still draft a quarterback. I would just have just have him there just in case you do draft a quarterback and the quarterback sucks. You at least know what you can get out of Daniel Jones. Yeah. But I'll leave it at that. I won't yes, bore everybody with my New York New York talk. But I just wanted to get that out there. And yeah, man. Uh, Sean, we need to know, man. It's at some point. It's like okay, Wright got fired. McDaniels loses one more. He's he's got to be like next. Like, what's going on in Las Vegas? A game where it looked like it was going to be a blowout. Yeah. In the first quarter, uh, Devonte Adams was going completely crazy, and Thank they lose. My fantasy. To, yeah. Jacks, yeah. 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 He's on my dynasty league, so I'm very happy about it. But they lose to Jacksonville. But this is just becoming who they are at this point of. Yeah. We're going to have a lead, but we're going to blow it, though, and we're going to lose. Yeah. So it's like, what, what what are we doing over there in Las Vegas? I mean, look at look at last week, not just this week, blowing that lead. I mean, they, they got shut out 24 nothing last week. I've been saying this for years, and, yes, we can look at McDaniels. We, we know he's not a great head coach. We, we all know that, and he definitely has to take some blame. But Derek Carr is not the guy, guys. I keep trying to tell these people. You know, he's not the guy. He's really – look at his last f- five or six starts. He hasn't gone over 300 yards once. He's he scored zero points last week. I mean, he looked – he started off pretty good this past week, but Derek Carr's – he's going to be flashy with the stats, but he's never going to get you to that where that you want to be. This has to be one of the most disappointing teams in football this year. I mean, the whole AF – I mean, the AF the, – Denver and them, I mean, and Green Bay, I mean, those are like everybody had high hopes on the Raiders, and even I did to a certain extent, but Carr is just not the guy. You, I mean, you can keep giving him another year, keep giving him another coach. You want to fire the next coach and the next coach and the next coach, but one day people are going to realize Carr is not the guy. He's got all the weapons. He's got to be able to close the games. How, how many one-score games have they lost? You know, four or five games that are one-score games. All entire season, yeah. Yes, every game besides last week. or I think there's two games they lost by double digits, but every game's been a, a single-score game. Derek Carr, does, he, he'll play well for two or three quarters, and then he'll just blow it in the end. That's what, who he is. That's what you're going to get from him. He's got an awesome offense. Defenses, I mean, I, I get it, defense ain't all that either, but it's not like they're getting thir- scored 30, 40 points a game on them, you know. I mean, they're, they're holding yeah. teams in the 30s for the most point, but 
Derek Carr they're is not okay. the guy. Yeah. yeah, they're not good. They're not bad, but they're, you know, I mean, 15, 20 range, probably maybe 20 more, yeah. more so 20, but Derek, the, the, the only answer you can get, Derek Carr is not the guy. Yeah, you can fire McDaniels. He's not the guy either. But at the end of the day, Derek Carr will get the next coach fired as well. Uh, Jake, what's your take on, on what's transpiring over there in L.A.? Or, sorry, Las Vegas. It's hard to go against what Sean's saying. How many chance? How many chances is he going to get? How many other coaches is, is he going to get? How many systems is he going to get? How many playmakers are, is he going to get? He had Waller. He had Crabtree when Crabtree was good. He had um, – now he has Cooper. Devontae Adams. He had Amari Cooper. How many, how many opportunities are we going to give Derek Carr? And how many times are we going to say, it's not him, it's this. It's not him, it's the coach. It's not him, it's the old line. I mean, the O line's not good, and Josh Jacobs was cooking for a little bit there. I mean, he's doing he so has seven hundred fifty yards rushing. I mean, he's top four. Yeah, rushing this you year. can. He if Josh Jacobs is making it work, who relies on the O line? Derek Carr's been in the league long enough. He should know. Hey, this play's not going to work. I need to audible out to. I need to figure something out. I need to switch something. Talk with the coaches. Talk with the coordinators. You're you're not a new guy. You know how it works. You know how this things goes. Maybe he's just one of those guys. I'll get you nine, ten wins a season, keep the team relevant, and that's about it. That's probably where we're yeah. at. I will, I'll say, you know, I, I feel like this – I started this year off with high hopes also with the offense, and it was just – I don't know what what the heck has happened. I'm, I'm going to ride the, the wave of, yeah, it's time, Derek. I, at this point – you'll you'll at some point just become a really good backup and some injury will happen and you'll get your chance to play Andy Dalton I mean we see him now with the Saints so it's not like it's over you're never going to play again go to the Jets you're not that bad for them honestly if he went to the Jets that would be Uh, a perfect situation for him because you have such a great deep if you have a great defense like that and he was on the Jets to say I mean he would be perfect for that you know and he's he's just not your passer that we we wanted him to be. Yeah. It's just that's just not who he is, and I've accepted that. But I'm also going to accept that McDaniel's you are nothing but an offense coordinator. Yeah, and that Tom is Brady. Tom Brady it. made him. Come on now, guys. Tom Brady. He did. He did. But I will say, even when he went back to New England. That's just his niche. That's just who he is. You're, he's just yeah. offense. Todd Bowles is just a great defensive coordinator. That's okay. You are not a good yeah. head coach. Your niche no. is calling defense, calling offense, and that's all right, man. Like it's it's really not that big of a deal. But after it didn't work out with with um, the Broncos, this looks worse than the Broncos situation. Yeah, it at least does. You know, it really does. Yeah. At least Tebow. Got you a playoff win. I don't know. Yeah, that was an exciting saying. season, man. That was an exciting yeah, season, man. That was literally like the best thing that happened to you, and you're not yeah. even gonna get anywhere close to this. And you have a way better team than you did back then. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, you guys, let us know down in the comments. Disappointing. Very if, disappointing. If they somehow lose this week because they play the Colts, now I don't want them to lose this week. I want them to win because <laughs> I want them to lose. They'll win. But if somehow they lose. Oh my good! You got to think that man might not make it out out of the first year. Wow! I mean, it's been done. Um, Panthers first year. Texans coach. did it last year. They'll probably hire Rich yeah. Gannon since that's Texans a cool did thing it. To do. Um, Steve Wilkes, who's the interim coach for the Panthers, literally the year they drafted Rosen, didn't even make it to like half the season. And it's like, yeah. why did you guys even hire the guy then if you didn't believe in him? So. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, he he needs to win this week. I feel to save the job. I do think they'll get it because the Colts are just hot garbage on you know offense, and I love it. So, um, but just real quick though, we'll go around the room real quick. Uh, Jake, anything that's happened so far this week uh, that caught your eye? Any underrated player? Uh, anything just just regarding football this week? Um. 
No. Not really. I just I want to think probably to Sean. I know he was he was a little worried about this one player. I'm gonna go on the fantasy route. I'm gonna go on the okay. fantasy okay. route. I told okay. him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he did. I he told did. him. He was right. Relax. He was right. Yeah. Relax. Eckler uh, is him with me. All right. Yeah. He is him. Just you just have to. I mean, that's probably another team you got to talk about the Chargers. I'm not. It's mm. it's kind of disappointing. I don't think it's Herbert. I know a lot of people are saying Herbert just can't win games. Can't do that. <sighs> Herbert, man, but I don't like his short game. I don't mean to cut you off. I don't like his like he can throw the deep ball like nobody else, but his short game passing. It's I don't know what it is, man. I watched the last couple of his games, man. That's I don't know, man. I'm I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I just keep it in, in New York. Just again, sauce, man. As defensive rookie of the year, I, I gotta go there. And dare I say, defensive player of the year? I don't know. Uh, but, uh, a player. Of the year, I mean, he uh, can get there. He's got to rack up the picks. Yeah, he, he is, he is yeah. playing lights out. Don't get me but wrong. But if they're not throwing it to him, how is he supposed to get the picks? That's the reason Trayvon Trader. Diggs That's had a, a bunch of picks. That's the Deion Sanders problem. They don't throw it to your side of the field, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. No, it, it, trust me, it's, it's very true. Defensive play, uh, rookie of the year is a complete runaway. Like, there is – only person who could catch him is uh, the corner out of Seattle, who has, like, four interceptions right now, who is actually Tariq very Warren. good – yeah, and that, that's who I was going to go with, with my uh, under the radar uh, for who I like. The guy is, is really underrated, coming out of small school out of Texas, UTSA. Gives some glimpses of a fellow Legion of Boom member that was in Seattle. Hmm. I'm not saying he's going to be Sherman, but he's, he's, he's just reminding. He's tall, he's long, he's fast. And he's a he's already getting the ball. At, you know, he's not like a Trayvon Diggs where he's just getting the picks, where he's going to let up a hundred some yards to go with it. So we'll see. I mean, that's that's my underrated guy who really is starting to catch my attention and turn my turn my eye. Um, I think he went like second or third round again out of a small school. So Seattle in general is just turning balling. everybody's heads. Like, yeah, balling. What, bro, Gino? If you play like this years ago, you might have a statue of you in New York for crying out loud. <laughs> but hey, man, we're just happy for you, Sean. What, what caught your attention this week, man? All right, so this player has caught my attention the last couple of weeks, and you know what's funny is if if you go back about a month or a month and a half ago, I think a lot of people would say this 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 guy's just not the guy, franchise guy. But it's he's not winning all the games, but he's playing tough. It's Justin Fields. I don't know if you guys watch any Fields games lately. Yes. He might. He He's like. Thank you. He's Somebody like, put respect on this man's Fields, name. Fields, the last three, four, I think three weeks. He's the last three weeks, take, he's been on a tear. And if you watch his games, it's like watch, watching like a mini Michael Vick. I mean, this guy is. Yes. Now, I'm not saying he's as good as Mike Vick or anything. Yeah. Don't say that. Exactly. No, but I'm, I know. I know. I'm, starting to, I'm starting to see the potential of this guy. And just how – I mean, he ran for 180 yards and three touchdowns this past week himself. I mean, playing against the Dolphins. That's really yeah, I mean, ridiculous. and he still – now he does have to work on the passing game, but I don't really think, you know, I think it's more – I don't so think it's receivers. far off. I think it's – exactly. I think it's more I so – it's more receivers. Get a receiver. You may need a big fish. I feel like you have yeah. good Robin. They just got Claypool. They just got Claypool. Yeah, I feel like but... Claypool and Mooney would be good compliments to an alpha. Get you an alpha draft lineman, you know, plug in uh, some rookie guards, and and you are cooking. Montgomery and Herbert are a great one-two punch. And and I his, was his look, th- I said, yeah, you did. Yeah, you I were on felt, the- I felt he was good. I didn't. I didn't believe in the coaching staff, but yeah. they, you know, have clearly switched my my where I stand on that. But Fields has everything. It was yes. just how can we play with him? And you can see they struggled at the beginning of the year. And bad. A, a yeah, he didn't look playable. They're just... He didn't look playable. Yeah, he really didn't look playable at the beginning of the year. And I was like, this guy's not a franchise quarterback. And now they're just letting Everybody him go play backyard. He's letting him go play backyard and just, football. And he is just I mean, you watch I watched him last week against the Cowboys, and I'm like, Yeah, I mean, we won by 20, but that, let's not talk about that. Um, but he he was like, was like I mean, he just was his dual threat. 
is insane. He makes that the Bears team have a great running game now because of that dual threat. And he's just been probably the most exciting football player the last month in football. It's just been a real privilege to watch this guy. He's been tearing it up. And, I mean, now I see the potential. And they could be scary, you know, with, with a little bit more time and uh, more weapons. But, yeah, Justin Fields, I mean, that guy is balling out of control right now. Yeah, they need to get Fields, fields like – like Matt said, an alpha dog, like an alpha receiver, kind of look like look at Josh Allen. You gave him Defon Diggs. Look at this step. Yeah. Jalen Hurts. You gave him AJ Brown. Look at that yeah. step he took. They had the they had pieces around, but you give them that one alpha receiver that just demands attention, Cole Komet. demands targets. Yeah, even Cole Komet is a is a solid tight end. Yeah, but yeah, you give him that one alpha. I don't know who the alpha is going to be, but you go trade for him and you just look past whatever you got to give because you are going to help him out tremendously. So, I mean, there was reports yeah, in the offseason that uh, the Seattle was trying to move DK because they were yeah, in a rebuild. A good. That would be really good. I don't, I don't know if they'll still be in a rebuild, but yeah, yeah. This past this past week against Miami, if the guy doesn't drop the ball, oh my god, they could, they could have easily won that game. Yeah, no, yeah. that's an upset. The, it was right in the hands, and he just drops it, and that could have been a win against Miami. You know how that how big that would have been if they if they could have beat Miami. <laughs> Miami couldn't stop him. Miami's got a really good really good team and. He just sliced them up, man. And just off of one drop, I mean, they, they had a chance right there. Not saying Miami couldn't come back and score, but, I mean, it, it was right there. And it definitely is not Justin's fault. Yes. But, hey, gentlemen, those of you watching regulars, that's going to do it for our show. Uh, just kind of quickly, guys, something that you're hyped for. Uh, Sean, we'll keep it there with you or something you're hyped for, man. Yeah, um, so I'm hyped that everybody's back here. First of all, I mean, it's, it's great being with you guys again. Um, I'm also hyped that the basketball season started and we're, we're trying to get this basketball pod up and going. So everybody that listens to this show, we're going to try to do a, you know, once a week, once every other week show excited to get that off. I mean, basketball season, I get just excited for basketball than football. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited basketball season, football season at the midpoint. Yeah, it's sports. It's sports season, so that's what I'm excited about. Jake, what about you, man? Uh, yeah, man, just excited to be back. First of all, I really, I've, I've been trying to get back on. Um, this isn't a permanent setup, but I made it work today. I'm trying to trying to get back into the into the swing of things. Um, but yeah, just glad to be back on the podcast. First of all, and then tomorrow is the game for New York. You know, I'm talking about NBA. You got Knicks, Nets, uh, one team with a dumpster fire with a lot of other issues, and then you got the Knicks, who they're 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 in games. That's all I can say. They're they're, yeah, not, they're hitting this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jalen Brunson does look like a great sign. He looks I like, like a Brunson. true point guard like with Brunson. what they needed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to be back on the pod. To be honest. Yes, sir. Yeah, We're excited to have our guy back. Uh, something I, I'm excited for. Um, for the, for some of you who, who might be listening on the team, um, I just got put together. Or I didn't put together. I'm part of a four on four, seven on seven flag football team. So we're uh, looking to kind of get things going, practicing and whatnot. We just had our first practice yesterday as we recorded this on a Monday. And uh, it was great, man. Looks looks good. Uh, I think we might have like some sort of a tournament coming up in December. Uh, so obviously, I'll keep you guys posted. You know, come through and oh, and seventeen for your board. Sheesh, man. <laughs> Just be your own people sometime, you know. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, man, I, uh, we're excited to be back doing this together as a trio. Um, we can't thank you guys uh, more than enough for all the the love and support that you you give us 94 subs and you guys are killing six it. more four subs six, six more six Let's more the mark. six Come more on. away from 100 we can't wait we're gonna pop bottles once we get to 100 it's gonna be a great feeling uh reels are doing great our guy pj is just absolutely killing it pj for prez as wes would say the guy is just going crazy behind the scenes you just yeah. don't even know it he is. um 
but other than that, again, we thank you guys again for watching, listening. Um, continue to like and subscribe. Make sure to share this. Um, show our your friends our work and whatnot. And uh, we'll let Jake hit us with the outro. All right, guys. Appreciate the love, support. 94 subs, six away from 100. And love having you guys. And you are now listening to Regular Guys Podcast. Thank you.